Ooh, welcome boys and girls, I'm Scuba Winters, and today we're here talking about Live Letter 83 for Final Fantasy XIV's Patch 7.1. So this was done at the show floor of the Tokyo Game Show this year, so they only had around 80 minutes to do all their presentation for this, so they don't have as much meat as most of their normal Live Letters are, since they normally do it in all. In their own little office so they can have as much time as they normally have so this is getting split up into two parts this is only part one but they did still talk about all the major stuff that's going to be in the patch so any finer details will be done at a later date though they did not say when this date is but getting on with it with 7.1 being released in mid-november and finally getting its title of crossroads which I'm pretty sure is the first time they ever used just one word before a patch title. But with the key art, we have the Reen Gaia fusion at the top there for the latest ultimate. We have the Shadow Lord at the top right there from Final Fantasy XI for the 24-man raid. Below him is Prish, also from Final Fantasy XI. Though sadly, I've never played XI, so I really can't tell you too much about them, so we're here for 14, so I'll at least keep you informed on that. We have Ghoul Jaja. Looks like he's attacking Prish, but I don't think he's going to have any involvement in the 24, uh, the 24 man raid. But just looks like a cool battle stance nonetheless for the main story relevance. And then we have the Cloud of Darkness. Which is very much the Final Fantasy III Cloud of Darkness, which in turn, World of Darkness raid, which we will get into why the Cloud of Darkness is in this picture. But first off, we have the main scenario quest of talk to Wook Lamont again. People are, you know, one thing, people are shocked that that's a thing. This has always been a thing in this game, so... Go to one person, talk to this person, go to this other person, and talk to this person. It's pretty much every main story quest. I don't know why Dawn Trail was the straw that broke the camel's back in that, but nonetheless. We're at the, uh, we're at the palace, which, not surprising that this is gonna be, like, the start of the patch. And then we have Gulja in Solution 9 contemplating something, but it might be... Pretty obvious what we might be dealing with once we get into the dungeon, but that's a bit further into this presentation. And then we have Zerolja looking off. Looks like an Echo flashback since it is in all black and white, or at least a flashback of Gulja thinking about him. Hopefully we'll find out something about what the hell he was up to in the you know 30 years that he just... He was already kind of crazy, and then went super crazy, so hopefully we'll get some kind of insight of what the hell was going on. And then, we have the new Allied Society quest, which is the renamed Society quest, which is the renamed Beast Tribe quest. I'll try not to do this over and over again, but yes. So Allied Society quest now, and it is the Pelu Pelu. Though they will be the battle jobs. So, do try to make sure you have something in the level 90 range if you are leveling up something. Of course, if you're maxed out on everything, you can just still do the quest nonetheless and get... I'm actually not sure what the mount would probably be from this. And since so it can't be a llama, and it's not going to be the gold llama. You know, since we have a llama mount, and the gold llama mount's mostly going to be a cash mount, so... We are dealing with the uh, the Vanu Vanu or the uh, Hanu Hanu in this game, or Dawn Trail. There, so we're most likely not gonna have them as a tribe themselves. My guess would probably be the Wakoi for the gathering, and most likely some groups in Solution Nine. You know, maybe help start a restaurant or some kind of nightclub or something. Or possibly some of the children in Tuliolo, since we do have new character models for them. Maybe you have some kind of playground of like a secret fort or something. 
for crafting since the children probably would need stuff crafted the most since if we do have three tribe quests it'll go battle tribes gathering tribes and then crafting and it should be patch one 7.1 for the battle 7.2 for the gathering 7.3 for the crafting and then just nothing for four and five next up we have new custom deliveries I am not going to attempt to pronounce these names, but the lady we were helping out with the trains, probably helping her build the new train since we blew the last one up. Um, custom deliveries are most likely going to work the same way as they always worked, so... Free tombstones for very easy crafts, but they do give good EXP for crafting and gatherers, so you have at least that until the crafter beast tribes come out if you still haven't gotten around to leveling up all your crafters and gatherers but again probably help making a train and we have the finale for the roll quest so you must have finished all of the roll quest and we have the leader of the evil group that we've been dealing with in those quest lines and we got the gang all here of all the people we helped out. Ready for some kind of battle. And then we have the Wakameki Meki quest, which is all the uh, crafting and gathering uh, role quest, which I'm kind of shocked that we have now because Endwalker had its quest like on launch. And this one is a post launch story one, so and it is what it is. Though we did get a minion out of the N Walker finale quest. And we got, I think, some housing items for the Shadowbringers ones. I'm curious of what we're going to get from this. You know, we got some dealing with the people we helped out in the Walker Mecha Mecha quest. Some more people helping out in the Walker Mecha Mecha quest. And we have Hildebrand, or at least Dashu, but. We have the inconceivably further Hildebrand Adventures. Which people are saying this is the War of Light stopping this. Which I kind of want to say it's probably not. Because what if you're a Lalafell? How, how does this scene work out? Or, or does she like drop it? Does <laughs> she drop the bomb and then we're able to have it like ground level? It might... I, Kinda doesn't look like the viper arm there. It, it could be. I don't know. But we'll have to wait and find out, which we'll find out in mid-November. Next up is duty support. They will be adding more support for duty support stuff. They're going to be doing non-main story quest. Looks like they're only gonna be doing Halatali, which I can't see that being too hard to do. Uh, that is a pretty simple dungeon for a realm we born, but there is some, I think some kind of side quest that you have to do. I know the hunting log has you go into Halatali to do some of the hunting logs. At least for the free company. One, one of the, maybe the free company one does. It's been so long, but I know there's ones that are in the dungeon you gotta kill. The Hall of the Novice is finally getting an update. Training for specific battle mechanics ha will be added. Which is great. Everybody's been asking for some kind of extra thing to train people on just basic mechanics. With one of the first ones they show off is the stack mechanic. So people actually know what the heck this marker actually is and how to deal with it. So people don't grab the stack and then just run away with it. And we have the everybody gets an AOE, which is I like to call the COVID mechanic. Just get six feet away from everybody. And my God, this mechanic is always the most annoying because it's so simple. But everybody screws it up all the time. But either way, and we have the tank buster, which this one's actually kind of good to know because while well, you have the normal red ring tank buster, I only just figured out what this is because I don't normally play tank at a high level and I didn't realize this was like an Earthshaker tank buster. 
So, yeah, that's kind of important to know so you don't leave the whole damn party. And then, oh, I somehow screwed up uh, the, the slide here. But this will be unlocked at level 49. I, they did have a slide for this. I somehow do not have it. But either way, at level 49, you'll be able to do the uh, all of these all of these all of the novice things. So hopefully they kind of guide you to it before they send you off into the final few dungeons, since that is where you start to see these mechanics. And not just have like a, hey, you should do this thing. But either way, we do have PvP updates. We have extensive updates to PvP action execution and hit detection. So certain abilities, uh, some that were called out were Primal Ren, which is uh, Warrior's Monkey Flip attack. So this attack hits the second it's cast. Where normally it should at least hit when you actually get hit by it. But due to how the game works, like the second it's cast, you're hit and you're just immediately stunned, even though the warrior is nowhere near you. Another one is uh, Machinist Limit Break, which that thing can be very hard to actually block. I play Machina, so I really don't want that happening. But either way, I would like my free kills, please. But I will take some adjustments because some of these attacks are just like, okay, I thought I blocked that. But somehow I didn't. So they're just, you know, for a move like Primal Ren, you only get hit when the warrior actually hits you with the attack, not just because they cast it. Uh, we get PvP job action additions and adjustments, so they're really retooling all of the classes. All of the classes except for Picto and Viper, since they got new moves with the expansion. There's no need to redo them right now. So all the all the other older classes are getting all new moves and hopefully new moves. But we'll probably see more uh, more intricate details in the in the next live letter. The arena's improvements. We'll have arena improvements for the Red Sands and Cloud Nine. I'm. I mean, I'm for it. I'm not really sure what this could be. The only thing I can think of is like more quick teleports into action, because these are the only two stages that have that. You know, maybe something for the middle of the. For the middle of the road, or. Er, or the middle of the stage is what I mean, because there's one for close to where you're at and another two at the enemy's spawn or the enemy's little crystal base. And we'll have balance adjustment for front lines and rival wings. While this is very vague of what this actually means, hopefully this means that, you know, we'll actually get, you know, all the frontline matches to be two two team ones and no longer this three team clusterfuck but most likely because they're bringing in rival wings which is two teams already it's probably going to be something like retooling how much points you need for victors maybe having faster matches so you could probably see more damage to towers for rival wings and you know maybe you get more energy per fuel pickup or something of that nature but again, due to the vagueness of this, and also, you know, it might be, it might be putting Rival Wings in the same front lines roulette so people actually play it. But again, due to the vagueness of it, it is pretty hard to actually tell what these updates are actually going to be. But we will have to wait and see what these are. So until then... We have the newest dungeon, the, the the field station, the Yahweh field station. I'm not going to pronounce that. The Yahweh field station, because we're going to say no way when we actually see the pictures here. So we do have the outside. We are in the right outside the Solution 9 area in the dungeon there. Or, into the mountain areas and we have a facility and what is inside this facility some hospital rooms and we have 
bloodstained or most likely bloodstained windows here look like some kind of medical operations going on and the possibility that the young Gulja or Gulja what whatever the kid th there's too many Jajas around it I I'm actually kind of forgetting which one's which which is most likely cloned because nobody asked where the hell this this kid's mom's at like we knew who the dad was but it, it takes two to make a baby but with uh medical advancements you can make wonders and i don't think wonders were actually made here so we will find out when the patch goes live X, we have the 24-man raid of Echoes of Vanadil. Which, sadly, I never played Final Fantasy XI, so I sadly can't give you too much information on any of the references we have, because the first raid is the Juno the First Walk. So, we have a city street here, which does have a very cloudy kind of umbral you know staticky sky so whether we're in like some kind of void portal or something like like we saw in like Dunscathe or something don't know if that's happening or if we're even on the source for this and next we have is this area which is I'm going to assume most likely about the Shadow Lord which I do know he was the final boss of the first, uh, the main game of Final Fantasy XI. Again, never played it, so I really, I would love to tell you some information about this, but I, I just can't. Moving on, we will have our next main extreme trial, which will be the Minstrel's Ballad, the Spine's Burden. We will get... So we don't have any information on what the trial theme is, nor was sometimes... The main story quest is the first one. Sometimes it's the second trial. But here we're getting it 7.1. So we'll have the robot. And this time we will be having a new area. Before there was the sky and the wind themed area. We will be having a ice theme area. Which if I move out of the way. You can kind of see a ice bridge here. That will most likely block. Or <laughs> most likely get destroyed so we'll have to like go on most likely after you like stand on the bridge to uh, dodge these hand lasers and then get the hell off them to not follow the word ads. next we have no more games because the next unreal trial will be the jade stoa why I wanted Ravana. Everybody wanted Ravana, and we're skipping straight into the Foil Lords. But must they have the most annoying trials to pick for Unreal? Because we're going to have to do that stupid, like, dive mini game, which so many people are going to screw that up. People screwed that up all the damn time. Is that, is that in Extreme? I'm pretty sure it's in Extreme. It's just going to take longer. But either way, it's not a hard fight. But that's what you gotta do. We'll get to wait to see what kind of uh, mount we'll get. So we'll probably get like a sparkly green. What was Shadowbringers mount theme? I forgot. Wolves? Yeah, I guess green sparkly wolf. That'll most likely be the next mount. If there's not a, a, a new unique mount. Next, we have new battle content. So, we were talking about why the Cloud of Darkness was on the key art for this patch. And that's because we were beginning a chaotic alliance raids. Or alliance raid. Since this time, it will not be the entirety of the World of Darkness. It will just be the Cloud of Darkness. The Cloud of Darkness chaotic. This will be... While they wanted to go for like extreme, apparently they might have overtuned it and it's a bit of a savage quality. Seeing some of the mechanics they showed off here. So we have 
this kind of area of where you can and cannot stand. And then we have this fun mess of meteors that we're going to have to deal with, with meteors that need multiple stacks, some needing three, some needing a single one, and some needing two. Also with Automoses possibly sucking people in or out of dealing with something, we have uh, the other other cloud of darkness is the turn nine or nine whatever raid <laughs> whatever eden nine raid cloud of darkness is and we also have the little floor away pad so we're gonna have to stand on the paths to dodge the to absorb or not dodge but to absorb the meteors while also not standing on them for too long to fall to our deaths and People did do the math and find out that there is exactly 24 pads in this picture. Finding out that there's most going to be another pack of threes on the other side of this. So this will be fun times indeed. Next, we have the new ultimate raid. While we have uh, a new expert and a new chaotic raid. This will be released two weeks after the patch goes live. So hope you take your days off if you plan on world firsting this or at least, you know, getting in very early. Which we have for the Eden raid. So we have the Thancred Ranjit combination, which we knew. I'm pretty sure they already showed screenshots of this. So we knew this was going to be a thing. Next, we have the Oracle of Darkness, which we most likely get a Shiva version, considering how notorious that fight was on Savage. And probably get some kind of combination that we saw in the key art. So I'm not sure if this is going to be the final form. It would be kind of anticlimactic to show this in the live water picture, so it's probably not. But then again, you know, we'll probably have to deal with Shiva and then we'll get a combination of the two. But again, this is going to be released two weeks after the patch comes out. So do not expect this right away. Next, because everybody asked for this, is we will be having an update to Domen Mahjong. We'll be able to have the Scions have little voice clips for what I would assume when you do you know, make a cool move or get some points or something of that nature. I would like to assume to have this. Uh, this will be voiced. Voice reaction and commentary from the Scions will be added. So we have pretty much all of them. So we have Alphano, Alze, Thancred, Arianje, Yashtola, uh, Estinian, Grahatia, and... And Cryo. Because we have housing updates. So this was a very surprising announcement. And that is we'll be able to choose and change what the interior of the house will be. So we have right now, of course, we have the lavender beds, the mist housing areas. The Goblet for your Ulda, Shirogani, and the Firmament. But they will also be adding a very new one, and that is this housing area. Which also, as most people have been asking for a while, does not have any pillars. Though you're not able to remove the pillars from the old one, this one itself has no pillars. They could possibly add like the lavender beds theme, but without pillars or something of that nature. For me, I would like the Shirogani background, but renovated and not looking so decrepit as it is and not have like pa faded paint uh, railings and whatnot. So uh, there's that. So going back to this one, select interior design different residential areas regardless of the location of your plot. New interior designs will be added. So we're most likely guessing it's just going to be this one 
I don't know if they're going to add other ones. So this could be very easily. We could have, you know, solution nine themes. You could have the, uh, Lopret moon themes, any kind of other areas that they don't want to make all, spend all this time making a whole area for a Thavnir theme, you know, Crystarium theme we could be adding. So they also talked about, and they don't have any slide here. No, oh, they have the, uh, the goblet area. So we have goblet one. You can choose back and forth. This will be free. So you can just, so I'm at least I'm pretty sure it's free. So with this, yeah, this is the last slide. So while they did talk about it, they don't have it in a slide because it's not going to be in this patch, but they did talk about a very useful piece of information. And that is you will be able to expand the interior of any housing size. So we can essentially make our small houses have large interior. So we can make a pretty much a small house TARDIS. <laughs> but apparently they did say this will be a large amount of gill. So probably the same price as a large plot or maybe more depending on if you're going from a small to a large or some kind of uh, system. They didn't say what prices they are, but we'll have some ability to have a much larger interior for owners of small and medium plots. And that was the end of the live letter, at least for gaming stuff. They now did the home shopping network section of the new soundtrack for the Dawn Trail soundtrack you can get. And if you buy it, you can get a little zero minion. Next up, uh, this will have we order featuring 66 tracks from Dawn Trail. It'll be released in November. Within... Next up is the stream pass for the primals, which will most likely be in Japan. Yeah, it's going to be in Japan. So I would assume the songs that are in English are probably going to be in English, though any other stuff would be in Japanese. Next, you have new merchandise. You have some art of the crystal and all the classes. We have keychains of the Viper, Pictomancer, and Emmett Selks. Uh, little crystal. And a calendar of the uh, Dawn, Trail, uh, Dawn Trail logo. I would assume other key art is on there. Um, keep in mind with the keychains, there is all of the other jobs, and I don't know which of the uh convocation has uh as their crystals a key change i would assume zims so you can get those uh you can get those at the square enix store at least i'm pretty sure you can get them at the square enix store but definitely at the site like i did at least i'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right uh, definitely has stuff like this for sale or at least pre-order and next we have a Cryol t-shirt. You can get this in black and white, though I do think the black works a lot better to show off all the colors of it. Showing the drippy Moogle and the other thing you attack with, I forgot its name. And last we have this fan. If you, you know, it's Starting to get into autumn, but you know, for a lot of places, it's just summer part two. So you might need a little fan. Uh, all these signs in their beach wear, which you can see from the, uh, from the trust menu. And uh, I'm seeing that it's all the, the, the pictures, the show, if you have that outfit. So you have those and they have the final fantasy 14, uh, tabletop RPG the standard rule book delve deeper into final fantasy tabletop rpg with the final fantasy tabletop rpg standard rule book and deluxe edition which is now available for pre-order available february 28th 2015 i know i'm blocking it but i i can see the date and uh, that was that was it for the uh, live letter. So uh, that is it for patch 
7.1 live letter, though they didn't really get into any more nitty gritty stuff. So this is only the part one. They will most likely add a other date, which they did not say when the other date for the part two live letter, which they did say is going to happen since they did say this was part one. I would most likely expect more you know, more smaller things and more finer details on, like, PvP updates of, you know, how the zones are going to be adjusted and what kind of adjustments they're making to front lines and rival wings. And they also did not have any show about the uh, roadmap, which they still have not talked about. So this will most likely be in the Part 2 live letter. We could probably see next couple weeks, two, three weeks, and maybe a month or so. You know, probably early, late August, or late October, or early November. But, that is uh, still it for the live letter information. So, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, all that fun YouTube stuff. I've been Sakuba Winters. I hope to see you all on my next video, whatever that may be. I do want to do more Final Fantasy XIV content and news and other things of that nature. Uh, I also want to do other kind of Let's Plays and be a bit more variety stuff. But until then, I hope to see you again. Until then, um, bye!